Hi, everyone. I just wanted to touch base with you today. Many of my students are reaching out to me asking to walk them through some of the reading comprehension strategies that work really well for when you're reading digitally. If you are struggling with this, I want you to understand that reading a print copy of a document is completely different from reading digitally. And there are certain tools that will work really well to increase your retention and comprehension when you're completing assignments online. So I wanted to use this document as an example. So it's a story, a very simple story. And what I tend to use is a toolbar called uh, Text Help Read and Write. And it's a toolbar that works in conjunction with Google Docs. For this particular assignment, I would have kids uh, open up their purple puzzle piece so that they can access all the tools on the Read and Write toolbar. I would ask the kids to quickly look over the document, look for keywords, say the, the heading, the title in the document, look at pictures to kind of get a sense, okay, what's the story trying to tell me? And then I would have the child read the first sentence on their own. So for example, somewhere near the bottom of the hill, the beast growls. I peer into the swirling morning mist. I can't see anything but that sound, a rumble. So low you feel it, it's coming. And then I'd have the child identify what words they don't understand the meaning of. So for example, I might not understand the meaning of rumble. So I could use the toolbar to go up and find out what the definition is and then play that definition out loud. And look for which definition Noun. makes the most sense. A loud, low, dull, continuous noise. They heard the rumbling of thunder in quote. Then what I would have the child do is if they had difficulty with reading, I'd have them actually have the text Somewhere to voice near feature, the of the read hill, it out loud. The beast growls. And that's essentially to help them with their comprehension so that they understand what is being explained in the text. And you would continue to use that same type of process as you work through the story or the document. If I came across another word and I didn't quite understand what the definition was that read and write offered, I would use the picture dictionary so that I could actually see pictures to help make sense of what is being explained in the story. And for some students, this is an extremely helpful tool to help with their memory, to jog their memory, to make the information stick within the document. So I would continue down the document. For some students, it might be helpful to use this feature here. It's a screen masking tool. So it helps students focus on each line as they're reading. I would continue down. And another helpful feature that many students use is the voice note feature. So once the student reads a couple of paragraphs or a few sentences, what they can do is summarize the main points that they just read. And again, that's to help make that information stick in their brain. So if I were to read this here, smaller paragraph, the beast remains hidden in the dense morning fog, but its groan tells us it's close. We strain harder. The corner is so, so far away. What you could do is highlight one of the words in that little paragraph and create a voice note and you summarize what you just read in your own words. The beast was hidden in the morning fog, but then it, I, we heard a groaning sound and we knew that it was actually not that far away. And you would insert that voice note into the side of your page so that you could go back 
and listen to what you read at that point when you go to say create study notes or if you were looking for answers at the bottom of the document once you've finished completed uh, reading the assignment and you could actually listen back to what you wrote by just pressing the play button. So those are some features on the toolbar that are really helpful for kids. The highlighter tools, again, really helpful. If you're trying to find, say, the main points in the story or you want to identify the main characters. So maybe one of the main characters is the beast. Um, the other main character might be the brothers. Uh, or you could highlight in a different color the who, what, where, when, why in the document. So there's lots of different ways and that you could use the highlighter tools to make the information stand out. And again, this is just helping the child engage with the text so that they're focused, that they remain focused. And if they have to go back up and review the text for answers, they know that they have important information highlighted and they can go directly to the highlighted information. So let's go down to the open responses below. Many of the students that I work with who have written output issues, they have a really hard time just going from, uh, you know, going right into typing up their answer. So what I have students do is to summarize using their voice note and then their, their response, and then go in and type up their note. So it doesn't seem like such a big hurdle for them. It's chunking down the expectation and what's needed to be completed. So for this example, number five, it's an open response. Is Julia a good sister? Explain using specific details from the text to support your answer. So I don't have any difficulty reading that. For my students that do, I would encourage them to try to read it with their eyes, but then to go back and listen to the what's... Is Julia a good sister? ...being asked. Is Julia a good sister? Okay, so let's start there. And when you're using a voice note, you have to highlight something in, uh, in the box, right? So I always put VC for voice note, and then I would complete a voice note. Ju Julia is a great sister because she took care of her little brother. And then I would insert that voice note. And then I would go back and write what I just spoke. So it simplifies the writing. Most kids can explain in using their own words what they're trying to say, but it's hard to just automatically go Julia into Julia is a great sister because she took care of her little Brother. So I'm listening to it, Julia and now I'm going to go back sister because she and type in what I just brother. wrote. So Julia, if I was having trouble spelling a word, let's say I didn't know how to spell the word great, then I could turn on my word prediction gr gr and try to sound it out. Great. So it's good for kids that are having difficulty with their decoding. And if I still couldn't quite sound it like s, s, I, s, oh, it's not coming to me, then I can use my voice to text. Sister. And there I've answered the beginning of my sentence. Now, what's the second half? What else do I need to do? So kids may need a little bit of prompting explain using specific details from the text to support your answer okay so what is the key things that they're looking for in this question i asked the students to highlight so they're looking for specific details from the text to support my answer so my answer is julie is a great big sister now i need to put you know two or three reasons why and that may mean going back up to the top and finding out those answers. I really encourage kids to use the outline as much as possible. And when teachers are putting together documents, they should be creating an outline. So it simplifies 
um, going up to the top of the text to find the information for students. So those are some little uh, examples and ideas on ways to help your child uh, expand their comprehension when they're reading using digital tools. There's some strategies there, really helpful strategies that I hope you try to use. And good luck with that.